Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and you're watching The Brown Feminist. about another profession within health sciences and that is called an MLT or a medical lab technologist. Now this profession may be known as different things in different countries. In Canada usually MLTs is the title that they most commonly are you know referred to as. Now commonly this is a role that is uh, that is takes place within a diagnostics lab setting. Now this is different from a research lab and that's something I'm going to be explaining in this video today. So commonly when you go to a hospital, when you go to a clinic, when you go to see a family doctor and they're trying to diagnose you with something with, to see what kind of health condition you have or to see what your levels are of different things in your blood. Maybe you have too much or too little hemoglobin or your electrolytes might be off or, you know, different things. You might have an infection. So they want to see how many white blood cells are in there of different types. There's cancer technology diagnosis. There's a lot of different testing that they can do using different different biological samples. The biological sample can be blood, urine, stool samples, sputum, um, lots of different things really. Um, essentially there can also be tissue and other things. And then what happens to these? So most of these would go to a diagnostics lab. So when we say lab, it can mean either a research lab or a diagnostics lab. So in a diagnostics lab, we are using established protocols so with established controls and making sure they're all valid results, there is no variation, often using kits that are already industrially standardized to see the levels of different chemicals in your blood, chemicals, proteins, um, interleukin, solutions, whatever it is. So this is usually done by MLT. So once the nurse or the phlebotomist is collecting your blood and is preparing it in a little biohazard baggies, it's getting taken on to a diagnostics lab. Once in the lab, the MLT will receive it, will verify you know, who this patient is. Obviously, you don't want to mix up between you know, whose result is going to who and get completely wrong medication on the basis of that. So what they would do is then take samples from there and run those tests. Sometimes they can use automated machines where they just have to put in a few samples. Sometimes there's more chemical reactions that happen before it. Maybe you want to test your blood grouping and it needs to test whether it's positive, negative, A, B, A, B, or O, and then the RH factor testing. Sometimes it's simple agglutination tests. Sometimes it's much longer. Sometimes things like blood, when we're checking for sepsis, you need to check for multiple days. So you're incubating it in a flask in a certain uh, incubation environment with humidity and a warm temperature and observing for bacterial growth over time and seeing what kind of bacteria is really growing. So you can find out if you have specific kinds of bacterial infections. So all of that, and then, you know, collecting the results, entering into a system, and then, you know, no what that means or sometimes you know the samples are not good enough so the MLT would have to say we didn't have sufficient amount or the sample was already chemolized by the time it came to us it was not of a quality to give a correct reading or this is too high or this is too low so there's lots of things that MLTs have to do and they usually work within that kind of a wet lab setting now how this is different from working in a research lab is that in a research lab, you don't have established protocols. You are playing around with the protocol and you know, crossing the boundaries of what is already known to create new knowledge, to generate new knowledge. Which means, for example, the MLT will never be able to say, oh, today I feel like um, you know, doing a test for this new cancer and I came up with an idea in my head. That's really not their job. MLT's job is using, you know, we have this specific test that was developed by this company and they use like a chemical A, B, and C and they mix it in this way in the proper guideline. We're going to follow it to the dot and we're make sure all of our controls, you know, the positive controls, the negative control are working to make sure the results we're giving to the patient are valid, they're sensitive, and all of that stuff, they're, you know, clinically correct because on the basis of this, a medical decision is going to be taken by 
the nurse practitioner, the physician, the specialist, whoever. On the other hand, the research technician that's working in a research lab setting is not producing results that is directly impacting a patient's life with that data set. Their job is to create new knowledge. So sometimes they can be like, oh, previously we've used this kind of an incubation and tissue culture system to study this cell. Now the investigator they work with, the scientist they work with is saying, hey, can we see if this other cell type also has a similar way of growing or we can do some protein analysis on it or we can see how that reacts to that. So then the, you know, the lab technician, the research technician in a research lab is going to try it out with different chemicals, see if they're going to get good results or not or something's going wrong and then share that with the team in the lab meetings and eventually if they have a finding, positive or negative finding, they're going to try and publish it in a peer-reviewed journal and over a long period of time, five to 10, 20, 40 years, they might be, um, you know, eventually coming to something that's translational. A lot of basic science can prove or disprove things in a preclinical setting before we find out that, you know, accumulation of a lot of these lab experiments in a research lab can eventually make major breakthroughs. So we need definitely research labs to do their thing, to add to new knowledge a little bit at a time. So then in the long run, we can put that all together and say, huh, that makes sense. Now let's test it on animal models. Let's do human testing. Let's bring the drug to pharma. Let's adapt it to make it a marketable, stable drug with the minimum side effects, things like that. So you see the research technician's job is kind of to play with the actual tests. They do have some established protocol they start off with, but they're allowed to modify it as you're testing out new things and they can publish new ways of doing things, new experiments are running, new protocols can also be peer reviewed and published. And MLT's job is significantly different. So in this video, I wanted to talk to you guys about kind of the differences in them, but really focus on the job of an MLT. MLTs typically in Canada can require a two-year degree if you already have a bachelor's or a master's from before, or you can go straight into college typically if you have like biology and health sciences and stuff in high school and do a three-year degree in college, and then you can get your degree and then you can do some work and get licensed as an MLT um, under like a national Canadian body, there's provincial bodies, um, and you can have your, be certified, be a certified MLT essentially, and then you can work for different hospital settings, different clinics, um, educational institutions where this kind of work is done. And MLTs can also specialize. There are some more, um, more technically critical kind of testing that's not given to every MLT. Blood samples and more routine testing is done by people with a little bit less experience. But as you go on, medical lab technologists can also be trained in the more complex testing that's maybe done for very specific advanced conditions or very um, like things that may, may require some degree of like you know using radiation isotopes and things like that and need highly trained individuals to run those very critical experiments with very expensive radiation agents that just can't be run in a big batch. So there are lots of roles in MLT positions available throughout Canada. I have particularly noticed that um, as you move away from the uh, urban hubs and you go a little bit towards the suburban areas in the country, um, like for example in Ontario, there are small, so many smaller towns with hospitals which are actively looking for MLT roles and these are full-time good jobs. The salaries can range from like 60, 70, 80, 90,000, 100,000. Um, so there's a gradient as you're gaining that experience, but for the amount of time you're putting in to get that degree to, you know, the salary is really like a good, um, I want to say, outcome of that. Um, definitely, this is for somebody who doesn't necessarily love research, but enjoys the routine, enjoys, you know, being very careful with your work, having fine attention to detail, working in a laboratory environment in a quiet space, uh, free from a lot of commotion, and being very focused, very, you know, very focused and with attention to detail. That's the kind of person who would typically enjoy this job, who wouldn't mind a little bit of monotony because it's a little bit of structure and routine and being careful about, like, labeling things and data entry and you know keeping up to date with the changes in the standard operating protocols and such. 
So if that's a rule, I definitely want to make more videos about it. If you have more questions about it, please do give this video a thumbs up and then comment down below with whatever questions you have or advice you have or feedback you have about this rule. If you want, I can make future episodes uh, like this focusing on other different roles that I feel like often get neglected. I feel like when we talk about health science, we talk about just medicine and nursing. When we talk about uh, research, we just talk about like clinical research and CRAs, but there are so many other allied physics, you know, allied jobs, whether it's in health or in STEM or in uh, research or in laboratory settings when you're still actively involved in sciences and life sciences and health sciences and you're helping so many people do good in, in their life and helping support health and diagnosis um, but they look different and every single piece of this puzzle is important in order to get a person diagnosed treated and healthy so this was it for today again this was the brown feminist and i hope you enjoyed my video if you did don't forget to subscribe to my channel for many more to come Ta -da.